Hey, Nick Lakenway, this is Hello, uh, Alexander. Alexei, are you there? Yes, of course, sir. We're right. We're right here. Well, here's the deal. Obviously, we've got a lot of investigating to do. The night going from Sunday to Monday is our next attempt. So. Uh, we're going to skip a 24 cycle and then reattempt. And so, for the, the uh, course B signal uh, amplifier was causing some issues. In the signal amplifier, and it uh, communicates with the uh, instrumentation compartment, where which fits us close to Alexander's. So, so what we would like to do now. Test. We would like to do a test. So we're going to use the we're going to use the uh, signal amplifier that you use, so we consider it to be fully nominal. So we're going to use that from the coarse string in the instrumentation compartment of your soys. And if everything goes well, which it should, because uh, it hasn't been that long since you got to the station. So we're going to ask you to remove that amplifier unit. It shouldn't be that hard. We will have a specialist sitting right by the Glavny side. He will walk you through uh, whatever you need to do as far as getting it uh, dismantled and brought up. So that signal amplifier will need to be moved from the instrumentation compartment and stowed in the place of this uh, suspect signal amplifier that has been uh, giving us a disservice in MRM2, and we're going to stow it there. Since we're not going to be able to do a full full test without the spacecraft, so we're just going to sign off on this no, uh, on this amplifier as being nominal, and the quote-unquote bad amplifier, we're going to try to ask you to uh, put it in the place of the one you removed from the uh, Soyuz, from your Soyuz Alexander. So basically a amplifier swap, and we're going to do a closed loop test there to make sure that that amplifier is the bad branch on the fall tree because we're expecting if the amplifier is to blame that you know that test will be uh, will fail and so and so we're gonna in the meantime we're gonna start building the timeline and beefing it out in uh, in preparation for the upcoming reattempted ducking how clear is everything I've just told you yep the logic and the sequence of events is perfectly clear we're going to be looking forward to getting uh our radiograms and everything? That's right. We'll get everything ready, obviously. It's such a shame that we're not able to uh, use Taurus. We would grab it and bring it in. Yep. Fortunately, this is the kind of stripped down soils we're dealing with. We've got no tour. This is Mission Control Houston. You have been listening to a conversation between Russian flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov that you see on your screen. Now the uh, Russian flight controllers theorizing in their conversation with the cosmonauts on board the station that uh, the problem that prevented uh, the automated docking of the Soyuz MS-14 to the Poisk module uh, within the hour uh, is a problem not with the Soyuz system, but rather with the core system on the station side of the docking interface. Uh, there is a cores P for passive, that is uh, the station core system, and a cores A system, meaning active, that's on the Soyuz side of the docking interface. The two systems basically bounce uh, signals off of each other to uh, enable the uh, onboard computers on the Soyuz vehicle to uh, gauge uh, its position relative to the docking target, as well as uh, distance and rate of closure. On uh, manned Soyuz vehicles, which is not the case with the MS-14, which is an unpiloted test vehicle. For Soyuz manned vehicles, in the event of a core's failure, the uh, station or the Soyuz commander would take over the flying of the Soyuz for a docking. 
In the case of an unmanned progress cargo ship approach to the station, the Progress is equipped with a backup system called the Toru system, which is the tele-robotically operated rendezvous system, so that if the core system failed, the cosmonauts in the Zvezda service module operating from a workstation would activate a joystick and manually fly the Progress in for a docking. Well, the Toru system is not part of this uh, test flight for the Soyuz vehicle because it's in a manned configuration, although there is no crew on board. As a result, uh, the cosmonauts on the station, Alexei Ovchinin and Alexander Skvartsov, were equipped with the ability to abort, send a command to abort the approach of the Soyuz to the station. That's what happened uh, almost an hour ago at 12.36 a.m. Central Time, 1.36 a.m. Eastern Time. The Soyuz backed away to a safe distance out of the neighborhood of the station. It's on a racetrack trajectory, a safe trajectory, where it will fly uh, above, behind, and back towards the station, not only 24 hours from now, but 48 hours from now. The Russian flight controllers saying uh, that they will skip any attempt at a 24-hour rendezvous on Saturday night into Sunday morning. The next earliest attempt would be Sunday night into Monday morning.